Now, my complaint or my concern with Dabo was if he did not demand the proper accountability from the tight end coach, then I have some questions for him, right? The initial allegation came with you did not make him apologize to the team. I don't think that you can forgive a guy for that as quickly as Dabo seemed to. It seemed to me like there was more to be done in that case. I'm always going to feel that way, and he did not change my mind on that. At the same time, if your concern was whether or not he's the kind of person who cares about his players or at the very least recognizes that there's a moment in time right now that is changing people's views, he did seem to sell that point. He seemed to take things very seriously, and that at the very least I can give him. I thought it was interesting to see all of the cases, incidents, allegations, whatever you want to call them, that Bomani just described laid out like that, right? Because individually, they're all pretty different. Some of them are still unresolved. Uh, but collectively, they paint a pretty obvious picture to me of a football coach who has been willfully blind to one of the central issues that's defined his players' lives for years. And you could say, you can't put those kinds of expectations on a football coach, but those are expectations of Dabo Swinney's own creation. He has always painted himself as more than a football coach, as a self-designated leader of men. But I think what we are coming around to as a society is the notion that when it comes to race in particular, listening is a key facet of leadership. And I don't know how you can hear any of that all 14 minutes and think Dabo Swinney's ears have been opened. He had to do something, okay? You cannot be the program that he runs and have the N-word in this context or any context around your huddle. And so he sounds like a lot of white people sound amid the discomfort of today, a little bit defensive. And he's showing you his black friend's resume. He's talking about the generational wealth that it should be noted that Marge Schott also helped certain Eric Davises with and Donald Sterling helped certain Baron Davises with. I understand why it is he's trying to do what he does as Clemson's former football players like DeAndre Hopkins, like Deshaun Watt, are petitioning to get a slave owner's name off of buildings on campus. Could he have done it better? He, of course, could have done it better. He could have sounded less defensive, but a proud champion is going to do things like this, is going to stick his shoulder into the buzzsaw and say, hey, look, I'm not a racist, and here's why. In this present climate, it would be better if he simply listened but given where we are, he's got to say something. And I don't know that anything he said other than I'm deeply, deeply sorry is going to resonate at a time when college football players are no longer as powerless as they were 10 days ago. 